All right, so we're at Metzger Vintage Audio in Plano, Texas. It's like a suburb of Dallas, like North Dallas. North, North Dallas. Yeah. Okay. Call it North Dallas, sure. We came looking in Texas for vintage audio. You found and it. And we literally. Mikey, it's up here. There it is. Literally what we came for. So start over here. I see you have a lot of vintage clips in the store, and two pairs. <laughs> these are they're not not first gens. There may be some custom. I mean, we can turn them around if you want. Yeah, they're see. actually built more like so. The new K horns are built with a solid back. Yeah. So the originals. So how you can tell right away that they're either custom or not original is they used to have the completely open yeah. back, which is why you had to put them in the corner. And now they've actually redesigned that and they made them with a closed back so that you can put them anywhere. But if you could see in here just how massive the horn really is, just goes all the way up here. And actually on here, and it's, I don't believe it's like this anymore, where it has the logo built into the top of the horn like that. Yeah. So that's a really nice design. You can definitely feel how heavy the material is that they made that out of. I mean, that is steel or yeah. whatever kind of metal yeah, yeah. it is. I'm not a metal expert, but that's a lot heavier uh, than they're than you're gonna find on most speakers. So in the crossover, if you can get behind here, Mikey, they're all gonna be exposed crossovers, so it's easier to work on. Not exactly easier to hook up with the old style uh, screw terminals, but you know a lot easier to upgrade or work on than any other speaker. And then this guy up here, yeah. Actually, yeah. you might as well, while it's turned around, you can see the back of this tube receiver. So before we flip it around to show you the front, you can actually just see through, see the tubes glowing on there. And you can tell it's like an early 60s. A lot of times when they made the chassis like this, that's early to mid 60s before the 70s kind of took over and it went solid state. And they went with the, you know, pioneer type receivers like we're gonna see in a few minutes. So this is a Lafayette LR800. This was made by Kenwood. This is exactly the same as the Kenwood 1100U. In the mid 60s, Kenwood was not selling in the US, at least to the numbers that they were later in, in the 70s, of course. So they built this for Lafayette and marked it with the Lafayette name and, and then Lafayette sold it in the US since Kenwood was essentially an unknown name at the time. Construction wise, uh, design wise, this is very similar to like a, a Sansui 1000A mm -hmm. tube receiver. Uh, Fisher 500, um, there's a Scott model that I always forget that's kind of similar to. Everything is kind of painted on the glass. Mm -hmm. So if you are, you know, new to repairing one of these and you go to wipe the glass from the inside, you're gonna destroy that because it's literally painted on and it will come off. Like if you touch the inside of it, it's gonna wipe off at this point. So this is a Kalich Model 20 combo unit. Um, this was made by KLH in 1965. This is basically a turntable and an amplifier all in, in the base model here, and then you connect up the speakers. And this is a, a G3000 Sansui, really clean. These G, I don't know about you guys, these G series have been selling really well for me. People, I think people like the, the big knobs on it. Um, I think it's a kind of a cool look. The Florida Vintage Hunter had the 9000. Yeah, yeah, the really and, big ones. Yeah, and yeah, just yeah. the detail, even on this, this is like an entry level the 3000 and the 2000. If you look at the back of it, the plugs are all, if I'm correct, on the bottom. Yep. So their entry levels, all the plugs and terminals were on the bottom, uh, just like they were on the Pioneers instead of being directly on the back, but they didn't skimp on the details. So if you look at the knobs, they had the chiseled edges like they do on the very expensive ones. You know, they light up just the same. They have meters, like the, they added everything to these, even the entry level ones. So they're very sought after. The series after that is the, the Z series. And I have one of those. That, here's the top of the line on the Z series. Yep. Entering the 80s, not quite all yeah. digital yet. Right. All the companies did both. They said, okay, wow. we're going to do an analog tuner. And then, wow, that's smooth. Yeah. 
It's cool, right? Uh, we're going to do a analog tuner, but we're also going to have a digital yeah. display. Yeah. And up top, it's not lit up, but there's meters actually at the top of this that go out to the sides. And then there's also like an EQ meter over on this side as well for the Spectrum Analyzer. It is a monster type receiver, which is probably over 100 watts. It has 160. A, 160. See, that's a monster. It has A, B, and C speakers. So when you see that, uh, the one thing I think it's missing for a monster is it doesn't have a mid control, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but lots of controls nonetheless. Got a JVC cassette deck. Have you seen one of these before in a long time? Maybe? No, yeah, not yeah. really. Okay, so JVC made a model in Japan only called the... Oh, what the <laughs> oh. heck? Yeah. You guys want to um, see that again? <sighs> so slick. So the KD95, I think was the model in Japan. Same exact model. Um, this was, that, that model particularly was like top of the line in Japan. That was like 5,500 yen back in the 70s, which equates to like 2,500 bucks now. So it was an expensive piece. They made a very limited run of these for the U.S. market. Um, from what I've read on the internet, maybe just a couple of hundred because they were so expensive that they didn't know how well they would sell in the US. And, yeah, I mean, the, uh, the detail on me have the little screws yeah. here. You have rack mounts on both sides, yeah. so you can see where you could rack mount it, and that's, that's a cool feature as well. All the different tape types you can do on this. You got a calibration, uh, you got meters, you got peak meters, you got, <laughs> sick. Now over here, we go to the Sansui, probably mid to late 70 integrated yep. amp model, the yep. AU717. Yeah, I love these. I, I think, you know, as you know, or uh, I assume these are super, super quiet. I mean, quiet as a church mouse. Yeah, and don't be fooled. You know, we always talk silver and silver, and then they go to the black stuff, and it kind of goes down. This is not that. They were doing black stuff before black stuff was cool, right? So this, like, super satisfying stuff right here like you hear that can you hear that mikey yeah i can hear that okay <laughs> satisfying that's what it's about so when you got something that does like on the volume control like that i mean this is a nice nice piece and it sounds good too yeah like all that Perfect. aside yeah, yeah, yeah. but if it does that it probably sounds good. Talk about amazing pieces. Probably one of my favorite roto reels sure. ever. That's and awesome. I don't know why, yeah. but you know, maybe it's the meters. Yeah. Uh, who knows, it is the 707. So yeah. I have a I have a Pioneer spec rack myself. Oh cool, nice. I have the 707, yeah. but I don't have pink reels. And yeah. that is just so cool. I know. Wherever they got these, these pink reels at uh, are just wild. So there's this secret little website where I got them called eBay. Now, let me spell it for you okay. so you don't get it confused. <laughs> All right. e -B -A -Y, E-B-A-Y. All right, Mike, Mike yeah. you write this down. Yeah, yeah. Look. It's F a new site, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> L-E-A-B-A-Y. Yeah, Flea Bay. Yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah. I But hey, they look great, though, and they're really well made, so. Yeah, I, I, I love the pink. I may have to, I have, may have to switch mine to pink, too. Yeah. So now we're going to go down. We're going to do the ST-70. This one's in really nice shape, so it's original. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the chassis hasn't been redone, you can tell just because of the wear. Yeah. Uh, but it's in really good shape for that. Yeah. Um, I had, like, these, when we get them sometimes, they're just like literally a clunk of rusted metal. You get like 10 of them, and some of them are missing the, gr the grill, or some are missing the bottoms, and you never know. Yeah. Yeah. you know what they need but now a matching preamp for that this one you don't see all the time at least you don't see it in the wood case yeah i love the wood case on it it needs i got to bring this one over to my uh my um carpenter guy to give it a little little love it's a little chipped and a little it needs a little tlc but other than that it's a uh, it's a pass one it's a tube preamp that matches the tube amp um a really simple uh, you know, clean linear design on these. They sound great. And these always look better in the wood case, actually, for me. Yeah. Like outside yeah. the wood case, they 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 don't look as pretty. Yeah, and then a couple little seventies pioneer pieces. I put them next to each other so you oh, we yeah. could talk about them both. So we got the seventy eight, we got the nine eighty, which is one of my favorites, and of course everybody knows I love Pioneer and all the sounds that the pioneers make, right? 
And this one, even though it's not lit up, this one actually all the lights glow different colors. It has the black meters, but it's still nice glow to it in front of that. And the wood case is in phenomenal shape. I don't know if that's been redone. I mean, we put a little orange oil yeah. on it, but other than that, that's about it. Now, this one's in really nice shape too. Yeah. This PL550 yeah. from Pioneer. Yeah, really, uh, really clean dust cover. Very yeah. clean. Just a classic, classic model. Um, I'm a, I'm a big fan of these, uh, you know, the 560, 570, um, uh, 530, they're, they're all great, um, nice mid-70s models. You got a Citation 12 yeah. power amp. Hidden in the back here, but I'll tell you, I love these. The same, same kind of vibe as the AU717. These were super clean, super quiet, dual mono design where it's it has two transformers, it has um, two it fuses on like it. It almost looks like an Adcom. I know. Like a, like a pre... Like a 70s ad conversion. I know. It's, it's all, nice. it's, so it's, it's basically designed like dual mono where, and then it just meets so cool. in the middle at the yeah. last second, you know? So again, quiet as a church mouse, so easy to drive. If you ever see this, that's, that's most likely, more than likely, 99% of the time is the dual mono when they keep the yeah. inputs apart. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really easy to, uh, I uh, love a, a power amp like that. Well, we'll see what we got here. So we had the SX-780. The SX-780 is the most popular vintage Pioneer receiver. It sold more than any other vintage Pioneer receiver in the 70s. Uh, still one of our very, that's clean. This is our top selling vintage receiver right here. And then going over, so now we're kind of going back in time a little bit. Now we have an SX-20, is that a 2500? Uh, 2500, 2500. Yeah. yeah, early 70s. Yep, so that, yeah, you're going, you're probably even, you're probably at 70. 72s, you're looking at the, at the 2 series, and then 74s, you're looking at the 3 series. So they also made the 9000. That looks like it's just from the series that the that the SX9000 was from. Yeah, that's a very similar look. Then here we go. So this is this is your 72. This is the SX727. Um, so that's going to be a little more of a rose gold front. You're going to have the blue meters and the blue light up dial there. And then sneaking back behind the yeah. Yamaha, got oh, a Macintosh. Little, little Mac. It's an MA5100 integrated. There you go, because yeah. I can't read it. No, it's a 5100 integrated. That one's mine. I got to get it uh, oh. coming, coming, coming soon. Coming to soon a, to, to an a, audio shop near to you. A, 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 <sighs> Wait, we still got a film? I thought we were done working for the day. No, no, we I'm, got we got film. I'm to just do, enjoying. Man. Well, I like to look at this kind of stuff, so it's probably better looking than me on the couch. We're gonna start with this because I love these hubs in all colors. Yes, they are just amazing. And another thing you get on, on the interwebs, but uh, they really make the rotor roll send out. So if you've never tried these hubs and you're trying to jump on it, I think that's the way to go. X10R, very good rotor roll, very reliable. Not usually too, too many issues with this one. A nice 10 inch auto reverse. I, I call this one the Goldilocks of reel to reels because, especially for 10 and a half inch, because you get all the features, you get the, uh, you know, the, the bias adjust and the EQ adjust, you get auto reverse. You get the ability for 10 and a half inch reels, dual cap stands, but you don't have to pay 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 mm -hmm. on some of the higher end TX, and, you know, the yeah. X1000, X2000, 747, 646, you know, the, the really high dollar pieces. It's a nice Goldilocks kind of right, not too hot, not too cold. And oh, really, it's got the gold. And it's got the gold, yeah. Gold, gold, okay. See, yeah. that's why you did it. So this is actually one, I, I've seen a lot of, but this is probably one of the better ones I've ever seen condition wise. Mm -hmm. Really clean. Yeah, yeah. It, this this Pioneer Rota Reel, which I don't know the model right off the top of my head. Hold on, oh, allow me oh. to, oh, allow no, me to tell you. That's why. It's oh, the A35. It's the A35. So, so typically what is happening with these is that dust cover that says that usually goes. And then this becomes very, beat up over time but this is shiny as ever i mean this looks great you can detach the head shell which is a great feature on one of these you got three different sizes you can throw in here it is looks like fully automatic fully automatic oh i see i couldn't see that written right there on the <laughs> pioneer because the head shell was in my way now i'm i know you want to get to the mac but i'm going to jump down yeah, to here sure. first this cd player is like a go-to it's a bench CD player for us. We use it. We've been using them for years. 1986 Toshiba chipset on it. It's a great, you know, great DAC, great sounding DAC. It has a really warm analogy kind of yeah. tone to it. It's not 
sterile and clinical like a lot of um, you know later CD players from the late 90s and early 2000s. So the Mac 1900, you know, their receivers are super. I don't wouldn't even say underrated, but they're great receivers. They really are. And Mac was ashamed of them. Macintosh saw themselves losing money to Pioneer and Sansui and Marantz and all the other Japanese companies because they were catching on fire and Marantz went, oh no, we don't have anything like this. We better make it real quick. And they did and they're great. Not because they are, you know, any different than a lot of the other 70s receivers per se, but because they are Macintosh quality. This is one of their larger ones. I, I don't know the... Is this like this a mid 70s? Is, yeah, about, about mid 70s. Yeah, this yeah. was their, the 1900 was their top of the line. They didn't make anything higher than this. I and, love uh, the little dots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got all kind of mode selections. There, so there's there's the, I don't even know what you would call it. Speaker selector switches right to left and right, left and right to left. So that was kind of, if I'm not mistaken, like bridging the 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 channels out on that yeah um i think i think it also if i am remembering correctly i'm sure someone will correct me in the comments i think it also helps with setting your speakers up to make sure that they're positioned correctly um so that you're getting you know the right right angle and the right sound out of them and stuff so. i'm also wondering if that has to do with your inputs as well you're just gonna have to let us know yeah <laughs> So it, the, it just sounds good, okay? Yeah, it like, just sounds I good. I can't know everything that happened before I was born. Now, is this, this is just furniture, right? Just furniture, just furniture. yeah, Nothing just crazy. a nice. But out there is not just furniture. Out there is not just furniture. Let's take a look out there, because okay. we skipped it when we came in. All right, now, I have to preface this by saying this piece is sold and waiting for its new owner to pick it up and do some stuff with it. So this is not a console. Not a console. This is not a console because, and you can tell, because it has the JBL logo, logo on it. So this is a JBL equipment cabinet. Equipment. This has a model number to it. This is the C58 Delphi equipment cabinet by JBL. When you would have a stereo in the 60s, early 60s to mid 60s, you may want it all in a nice piece of vintage furniture, which wasn't vintage back then, <laughs> yeah. but it was what was in, right? You didn't want it out all the time. You wanted to hide it until you had your parties. And then when you had your parties, you would open up the cabinet and there would be your equipment. So there is your Sony 600 stereo reel to reel. Of course, tube. Tube reel to reel. And nothing looks better than tube reel to reel where you don't see anything but the front. And the same would go for a tube tuner for me. I know you're not as excited, but don't, just wait. I, I, I save the best for last, or even next. Because in the middle is the Marantz 10B tuner, which was one of the best tuners of all time. Correct. With the scope and the seven, listen to that. So I'm gonna show them over here because this is a nice piece too. I don't think I've ever seen this one. Yeah, most people haven't. And I know what it is. Yeah. But I've yeah. never seen it in person. Yeah. This is the SLT 12 by Marantz. This is the specifically the SLT Universal 12. They made two versions of this one. It is uh, there was a 12 where Marantz and uh, where Marantz. Um, made a like basically like a soldered on cartridge and head shell that you couldn't change and then the universal where you could change it here you can see you could take it off and change the cartridge at your at your leisure so you you push the little circular knob and it just moves over and that's how it tracks so we could do this at the same time one you got push two ha So there is the Marantz Model 9s, correct? Correct. Uh, amplifiers. As you see, you may be kind of familiar with this round because they kind of took this dial on some of their newer products. Uh, but this is not one of those. This is an original. Everything about it is just everything you could want. Yeah. I know, 70 watts per channel. 
Um, that like a tube amp. Yeah. At seventy watts per channel. Yep. Is ridiculous. In the sixties, yeah. In when the, yeah. when everyone else was making fifteen watts, twenty watts, maybe they were making seventy. Let's look at the speakers. Yeah, yeah. These are CL forty five flares um, by JBL and. These are a two-way speaker, 15-inch uh, driver, and then a um, and a horn with a waveguide there, and then a kind of a little mini bass port there. Look at the size of that, the the wood frame on the grill. Yeah, well, there's a little bit of a story there. So back in the 70s, there would have been foam that surrounded all this, but the foam rots out over the years. The problem is it, it wasn't square foam, it was angled foam. Where are you going to find angled foam for a speaker from the 70s? You're not. You're not. So now they are foamless, but it doesn't really affect the sound. It's just a little weird, you're right. All right, thanks for showing us around the shop, Nick. Yeah, really appreciate of course. it. This thanks, fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You guys, thanks, if, you're everybody. In, if you're in Dallas, come see him at Metz Metzger's? Metzger. Metzger Vintage Audio. Metzger Vintage Audio.